Double game week 34 is finally here, and if you've been waiting to use that free hit chip, don't worry, I've got you covered with the ultimate team in today's video. Wasting no time and diving straight into today's team, we're going to start off with David Rea in goal, and I also want to reveal our first centre-back. It is going to be Gabriel as well. We're going for the double up in terms of the Arsenal defence. I think, realistically, it's not the dumbest idea in the world. Arsenal are top of XG conceded for the season. They also have the most clean sheets as well. This is being filmed while the Villa game is taking place. So if they do go and get battered 5-0, it might change things. It might change my perspective. Also, there is a little bit of a fault with this one as well, though. I think it could change depending on Kai Havertz and Luis Diaz. Now, these are the two players that potentially could switch around in this team now. I think that's the only negative of the double Arsenal defence. Other than that, I can't really see a reason not to go for it. Gabriel and, you know, Rea overall have been very, very good. The only thing that does worry me about Rea is Arsenal don't concede too many shots. So he's not going to pick up many save points or bonus kind of on the bonus point metric. So that is a little bit of concern. I probably would be expecting a max of 12 points if he did keep clean sheets in both games. So maybe there is a little bit of upside to go elsewhere and utilize that extra Arsenal spot in midfield. But for now, we're going to go with the double up in terms of the Arsenal defense. Gabriel and Saliba, I think, are one of the same. I think whichever way you go, you've just got to hope that you get a little bit lucky. Ben White is a good pick, but I think I would prefer Gabriel and Saliba. It seems like they are the solid centre-back partnership for Arsenal this season. As well as that, with Liverpool bottling the game against Crystal Palace, it does now open the door up for Arsenal potentially to go and win this Premier League title. So they will be, you know, conservative, probably a little bit less expansive in terms of their play and probably will be looking to shut up shop when they do have the lead and that might favor going for the two defenders rather than the two attacking assets moving on to our next defender it is going to be Muniz Munez however you want to pronounce it from Crystal Palace I'm sure someone will let me know down in the comment section below I was very impressed with his performance against Liverpool today he kind of plays in the right wing back position within this five back for Crystal Palace it's an okay set of fixtures West Ham they seem a little bit all over the shop Newcastle very good going forward so I wouldn't expect too much out of that game but the West Ham game hopefully you can pick up a clean sheet in terms of his minutes as well, they are very secure. Since joining the Eagles, he has played 90 minutes every single week. Seems to be a big part of the new manager's plans as well. So I think he is just a very, very safe option. We do have eight Nori on the bench. Now, the reason he's on the bench and not in the starting lineup, he missed out at the weekend due to this calf injury. Now, Gary O'Neill did say it was a precautionary thing. But I need to see something else from him. If Aitnor is back in training all week and we get positive encouragement from Gary O'Neill, I think I would prefer to start Aitnor over Munez. Just down to the fact that he's playing out of position and he's just a gold mine. As soon as you get a player that is playing out of position, you know, he's playing further forward. All it takes for him is to get an attack in return and a fluky clean sheet. And there you are looking at a double digit haul from a player like that. Very, very easy, very capable of doing it. He's already done it twice or thrice this season as well. So very much in his repertoire as well. So if we do find out he's fit and available, I would prefer going over him over Muniz. Moving on to our next defender, it is going to be Virgil van Dijk. Now this one again. There is some controversy around going for it. Liverpool haven't kept a Premier League clean sheet since game week 21. It's been a long time. They are up there, though, as one of the best defences for XG conceded. So it does seem a little bit of like, you know, something needs to kind of match up there. And maybe they might keep a clean sheet over this period. But Fulham, it's not the easiest fixture on paper. Offensively, they are a very, very good side. Everton, you would expect Liverpool to keep a clean sheet in that one. They are not very good going forward they don't create too many chances it's very negative football from Sean Dyche you would imagine that they would be able to keep a clean sheet against that one interesting though with Connor Bradley going off injured in the 48th minute today Trent Alexander-Arnold coming on I think I would prefer to go for Trent over Virgil as long as we get positive encouraging comments from Jurgen Klopp now this is a double game week close to a player's return from injury that player being Trent Alexander-Arnold so he might see reduced minutes over this time period but if Klopp goes you know what he's going to play both games or he's looking good he's looking fit 
I think I'd prefer doing that. Liverpool's clean sheets aren't secure at the moment. I'd rather gamble on a player like Trent Alexander-Arnold that can pick up attacking returns very easy. I think I would prefer that. So he might potentially be coming in a little bit later down the line. But we'll wait and see on that one. Wait for Jurgen Klopp's press conference comments. Moving on to our first midfielder. We're going to start off with Ben Brereton-Diaz. Yes, that's correct. A Sheffield United player, Ben Brereton-Diaz. Now, you might be thinking... Tom, have you lost your marbles? What's going off here? Why have you recommended a Sheffield United player? Let me tell you, it's very simple. Ben Burton Diaz has a pretty good goal record since joining the Premier League. He's played eight games, scored four goals, two of those in the past five game weeks. Pretty good underlying data as well to go with that. And he's played two of the worst defences in the league in terms of XG conceded and shots face. So there's a lot going in his favour as well. That Burnley game is massive because you do feel it kind of clambers on or kind of clings on to that Premier League status just for one more week. United as well defensively, they've been very questionable. It would not surprise me to see Sheffield United go and get at least one, maybe even two goals at Old Trafford as well. And you do feel like one of the players that would be involved is Ben Burton Diaz. Good data, has been doing extremely well, going under the radar and could be a huge differential for you and your sides this game week. Moving on to the starboy, starboy sorry, of Sunday. It is going to be Eze, obviously scoring in the game against uh, Liverpool today. You know, he's back, all good stuff. A pretty good offensive kind of uh, double for Crystal Palace. West Ham defensively all over the shop. Bottom five for XG conceded over the past five game weeks as well. Newcastle somehow are managing to keep clean sheets despite Emil Kraft, Paul Dummett, all these war criminals playing at the back for them. So I do think it is a matter of time before they do leak a few goals and you do feel like a smart team like Crystal Palace with very kind of skillful and intriguing players like Eze and Elise would be able to unlock that defence. Now the obvious candidates, you know, kind of uh, the comparison is is going to be between Eze and Elise. Which one do you go for? I'm slightly leaning more towards Eze. This is the first game back for Michael Elise. He only made around 66 minutes. Again, with a double game week being in short, such short succession. There we go. We'll get that one out. With it being in that kind of close time frame, I think Eze is going to see more minutes than Michael Elise. That's just my personal preference at the moment. But let me know which way you are leaning down in the comments section. Moving on to Luis Diaz. Like I said, this is probably one of those ones that could be replaced with Kai Havertz if there are any injuries or maybe Arsenal go and get thrashed today. He could be replaced with Kai Havertz. Now, Interestingly, Luis Diaz has been in okay form. Three attacking returns in the past five game weeks. You can see Liverpool going and getting, you know, some pretty big scores in either of these games. Fulham and Everton do leave a lot to be desired in the back line, especially. Luis Diaz, I think, you know, his only concern is the fact that Diego Jota is back from injury. But like very similar to the Eze and Elise situation, with it being a double game week, how many minutes is Diego Jota going to see? Realistically, I think Luis Diaz starts both games, sees around 60-ish minutes, 120 total. Diego Jota starts both games on the bench and does come off them for, you know, maybe 40, something like that, 40 minutes over both games maybe, maybe a little bit more, 60 potentially, something like that. So I still think it's worth going for Luis Diaz. Moving on to, you'd have to argue before this game week, a player that you were going to captain this week. It is Mohamed Salah. Now, recent performances from the eye test perspective, they ain't been there. They haven't been there. Let's be realistic. Today's performance I didn't really see Salah do anything that was overly exciting, didn't justify his price point, didn't do anything that would, you know, make him want a captain in this week. But on paper, he is the best captain on paper. Now, we're going to have to say that on paper. Recent performances, they've not been quite there, but data-wise, he's still been doing pretty well, still been ticking over with his expected goals. Two goals over the past five game weeks as well for Mohamed Salah. So it's not in like he's in the worst of form, it's just from an eye test perspective. It ain't quite there, so I definitely think there might be some potential switching of the captaincy armband this week 
interestingly, to one of the next players. Now, it is going to be Bakayo Saka who's going to complete this midfield. Only one goal for him in the past five game weeks. Not been in great form. Now, like I said, this is being filmed while the Villa game is taking place. So he might, you know, get a goal or an assist in that one and change my mind. Did score in midweek in the Champions League. And with the door now being open for Arsenal to go and attack the Premier League, you do feel like he will play a large proportion of both minutes in these games. My only concern is the kind of injuries and we're going to put that in quotation mark injuries around Bakayo Saka him limping off and him you know not seeing out games is he playing for an injury or is it kind of an act that is a little bit of a concern whether or not he's going to be able to see you know a large proportion of minutes during this double game week it is a little bit of a concern but I think he is still one of the best assets to go for in that midfield bracket on penalties as long as he doesn't gift them to Martin Odegaard playing for one of the best offensive sides in the league as well pretty good fixtures as well against two Two defences that are shipping goals at the moment. So you could see him doing quite well in this double game week. Moving on to our two forwards. We're going to start off with Dominic Solanke. I was very bullish on him in game week 33. And I'm going to be very bullish on him in game week 34 as well. Villa are down there. I think they are the third or fourth worst defence over the past five game weeks for XG conceded as well. Wolves, again leaking quite a few goals. Dominic Solanke, third for XG in the league over the course of the season as well. Scored yesterday against Manchester United on penalties as well. What's not to love about having Dominic Solanke in your side? Moving on to our final forward, it is going to be Cunha. Got a brace yesterday against Nottingham Forest. It's kind of, you know, been brewing a little bit. He's obviously been slowly coming back from this injury. I think Wolves have managed his minutes exceptionally well. Only played 125 Five minutes over the past three game weeks but I think that does put him in a strong position to now start both games for the double game week. The Arsenal game is going to be difficult, but that Bournemouth one, you could see him doing incredibly well. We've seen what capabilities he's got already earlier in the season, picking up that hat-trick, been a very consistent scorer and performer for Wolves as well over the course of this season. I've always had a little bit of a soft spot for him. I remember him back in the Hereford Berlin days. Now he's in the Premier League, starting to tear it up a little bit for Wolves as well. So very happy to have him him in the side before we finish up today's video let's have a quick run through of the bench onana's in there i think you could go for um uh, what's the guy's name dean henderson as well for a backup goalkeeper on the bench but i would expect rare to play both games mateta again i don't think he's going to get in here over anybody else from an offensive standpoint it all runs through eze and elise so those are the top two in terms of attackers i would go for we already touched on eight nori and his obviously fitness concerns and then jared branthwaite again it's just another doubler on the bench everton for me are a team i probably would be looking to avoid this double game week if you've got any questions about your team or free hitting this week get them in the comment section as i will try to answer as many as i possibly can but thank you very much for watching today ladies and gentlemen and good luck this game week